Thank you so much. My name is Shannon Stone Winding, and I am the president and CEO of the Black Alliance of Colleges and Employers. I, I was newly appointed at the end of last year, and I am so excited uh, to begin work and transitioning from my own firm, which I launched in 2016, um, Shannon Stone Consulting. All righty. My goodness gracious, like two different companies. This is fantastic. So, um, Janet, thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule because I know that you're busy, especially with these college students um, and what's kind of happened. So, you know, I'm going to start right there. Um, it's the biggest discussion. Um, you know, the month of May, June is very, very important for, and April, May, June is very important to these students. Um, tell me about what you're hearing, what you're talking about, what's happening right now before I start talking about your company. Well, you know, it's, um, I'm hearing the saddest of stories and it's heartbreaking. And, um, you know, these students who are either incoming freshmen, right, for the new academic year and have no idea what this will mean for them mm -hmm. and how this will change their experience. And, and on the other side of the coin are college seniors who this is their last year and this is how you know, it's going to be for them. There's, you know, no college ceremonies, no graduation ceremonies, no end of the year um, events and programming to support them. For them to miss out on the senior experience, especially in the spring term of where we are, it's where we position a lot of the career opportunities, finalizing internships, all of those things and it's in flux for them. So some students are reporting that they're hearing from employers that their internship offers or job offers are being pulled. Some uh, students are hearing that it's not gonna be pulled, but we have no idea what this will look like. And so please be patient with us. We still love to have you with us. We just don't know what that looks like at this point. Um, for them also, they're in classes and how to navigate through this process and it's all online now and I can't talk to other people and I feel so lonely and alone. I don't have that community. So it's heartbreaking and I am more, more impassioned every day to do as much as I can for them. So what are the, I mean, so um, before we go into um, what are you doing for them? Talk to me about your 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 consulting firm, but also where you're where you are now. Um, yeah, you started this position, and then the world changed. So how has yeah. it for you in regards of like how did you start it? Why was this the place for you? And how has all changed your plan of walking to this new position, starting this whole entire new initiative, and then the world changed? So um, you know, I spent about uh, over 12 years in higher ed. And prior to higher ed, I was in corporate America, uh, working for Mercer HR Consulting, companies like that, Kraft Foods, um, and I loved it. And I was excited to bring the corporate experience into higher education and see what I get to do um, with that. And I felt like it was sort of a playground of working with these younger students. And in addition, learning, that the population on campuses has completely shifted and changed, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, there were younger of us or, right? So over the years, it's majority adult students and non-traditional student populations on the campuses. And so how do we then feed that information back to how we work with employers and organizations to get them that information about who's on campus today? So I was excited that I got to work, especially for minority and underserved students. That was my focus. Um, military veterans um, and military family uh, students. In addition to uh, minorities, disabled, um, chronically ill. So I felt like I had more of an intensive advising and coaching relationship with those students. And when I decided to leave the formal role I was in at the particular uh, organization and institution, I knew my work wasn't done. 
I knew that I wasn't just let me leave here. And family circumstances change for me, right? Because as women, we go through these different experiences in our lives. And you look up and you say, I thought my career was going one way. And I thought that this is the trajectory and the plan that I had. Mm -hmm. And then instead, family things change. And it's, I have to revamp. And this becomes a second life and second, second career for me. So I had, thankfully, the best female coaches who surrounded me with the push to say, you know, you could really be doing this and supporting students nationally. You know, you really could be doing, you know, some really great things. And I had not, I hadn't even considered it. It was just, this was my life and I represented this particular organization. And for them, it was such a, um, easy transition or they could see it for me they had the vision and i did not have the vision i love right? it and so yeah i'm, I'm just gonna stop you for a quick second so you they have a vision for you um you had no idea this this wasn't even a thought for you um yeah moment where you decided it's time yeah so I was at another event recruiting and representing the organization. And there were a group of women who we were at a, uh, the Black Women's Expo, which is a huge big deal here in Chicago. Um, and it's held annually. And they had a pre-reception for VIPs. So I was in the room with all of these female entrepreneurs and they, you know, they were saying, oh, yes, we partner with you, you know, at this particular university and, you know, you're starting your own business. They just assumed that for me. And when I told them, no, I have no idea what you're talking about. They just said, no, you have to do it. Like, this is the vision you have and you have to do it. And it was the seed that was planted. And as things changed for me and my family and personal experiences, it was this is the time now, I'm young enough now where I can make this happen. I've been positioning myself in a way that I even didn't have a clue that maybe this was leading me on another path and I just didn't see it. Right. And yeah. so I gave my notice and it was out of my mouth before I realized oh, what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> and and when I was off, that way yes and my boss said to me wait what did you say and I said you know in my head I'm thinking yes what did I say what was that <laughs> and I gave her I said okay I'll give you 30 days and I thought in these 30 days I'm launching a business and I'm in my neck and that's exactly what I did I launched my consulting firm right before I left in the 30 days and was able to say to them, you know, this is what I'm doing next. And I'm so excited to be launching this and, and continuing to help these students in a different way that I really probably didn't have an opportunity to do before. So now we have full circle. You have like, and you've owned, you, you owned the consulting firm for how long? Since July, 2016. So I'm going into year four. Okay. And Excellent. last year I served on the board for National Association of african Americans. In HR, I was the national senior vice president representing collegiate affairs in partnership with these organizations of HR and training leaders. When I did that, I really wanted to, I really had a clear vision for what I wanted to do for the unit that I was in control of. Yep. And I had great partners that I'd been introduced, um, including Kim Wells who's the executive director of the Howard University School of Business. And he had a conversation with me in the fall of last year saying, you know, I know we've been talking about doing this partnership with the Black Alliance of Colleges and Employers, the organization that he founded in 2018. And he said, you know, instead, I actually want to just appoint you as president and CEO and relaunch this with the vision that you had created and let's do this together. And so I'm so excited that I get to lead this with Kim um, out of Howard University and the other fabulous board members 
um, who joined us, including uh, Dr. Stephanie Mason um, in New York. I have the fantastic team of people that I was really excited about pre-corona. <laughs> so, all right. So wait, again, this is going to be, this is going to be a, a threefold question, but I'm going to go to the, th the last part. You're in Chicago. How has the community changed because of the corona? You're, I mean, I don't know how often you're walking out your door, but I mean, I'm you have to go shopping. So what do you see in your community? Um, it, it's a little bit of an interesting question for me because I'm very much into shows like The Walking Dead. And it's amazing to me to go out on the streets of a major city and just see nothing and no one. And how, how many weeks are unbelievable? You, how many weeks have you been in quarantine? Oh goodness! So I'm going to tell you, I am a military spouse. My husband is a disabled veteran, 100% uh, disabled, and so he has pre-existing conditions. Mm -hmm. So he got sick in January. So we've been under doctor's order of quarantine since January. <laughs> so he got sick and then he gave that wonderful thing to me. So I was diagnosed with influenza A, kidney damage, pneumonia, and still haven't been cleared yet for the corona uh, virus test. Okay. Okay. But thankfully, I've recovered. Okay. So I feel blessed in that, that he's feeling better, I'm feeling better, um, that I'm starting to get notif uh, noticed from the community of people that I work with around professors who've, who've passed away from COVID-19 and students that we've worked with. It's just hitting everywhere. And, and it's something I never even considered when we were launching. So I, I mean, I'm one. I'm I'm so happy that you guys are doing better. I mean, I, earlier when we spoke, and you told me that I couldn't even believe it. I spoke. I mean, I've 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 had a conversations with you, and um, you are just constantly like high energy. And I would have never known that you were you that you were going through this because you're high. I mean, I attract high energy people. Like we're high energy people, and sometimes <laughs> people just are not aware of that. So I'm very happy that you guys are doing much better. Um, and you're taking on so many different tasks and making sure that you're helping others. So now, full circle, the business, the students, this new role, the community, putting it together, how are you balancing this? What have you learned? How are you helping? What has changed for you with everything that's going on? Which this is an extremely loaded question, but you get three major chunks of so much content that's happening in Chicago right now. Um, I want to know how are you balancing everything and how are you making changes to like basically with a roll with the punches? Well, I'm going to tell you, I have called upon my team with a sense of urgency. Okay. I think that when we were initially planning uh, the relaunch of BASE, we were considering it as a um, slow and deliberate launch. We want it to be intentional. We want, right, there was, there was um, we wanted to focus on research, have it grounded in theory and, and being the true subject matter experts in what we were doing, especially around diversity, inclusion, and equity. The change has been, okay, wait, we have more urgent issues where there are 26 million people unemployed in the US. We have students who are on the brink. There are people who have nowhere to turn. So yes, we get to focus on this specific population, but now with a sense of urgency about what can I do right now? How can I use the network I have to say to employers and organizations, do you have job openings available? Are you hiring in the moment? Even if you aren't hiring, in the moment, what do you think that looks like and how can I use the platform that I have to then bring others to the table and help the organizations with where they are, right? So if the companies don't have a clue 
about what to do, which is understandable because this all hit at the same time, then how can we together as the alliance then support those in these roles? So I think that's the biggest thing that I've done is it's urgent. It, it's it's right it, now. But when you're saying it's, it's urgent, it's right now, what are you like, give me a couple of examples of what are you doing and where do people- Yeah. Because the yeah. organization is there, it was being relaunched, it is being relaunched, um, yeah, have all the, I mean, the the list of individuals that need your help and your services. How do they find? You? I mean, how do they know that um, I'm home? I'm I'm scared. I'm lonely. You're hearing it. They're in classes. They're not getting that that human interaction that they're getting that they usually would have. How right? Getting out of their own way, in essence, because right yeah. now they're having the pity party and be on TikTok. You can be on. Facebook, you could be on Instagram, you could be on all those platforms to try to like be, have some sort of a connection with people. But at the end of the day, this is going to end and then they're gonna to have to think about school and jobs. What should they be doing right now to find you but also to prepare themselves? Yeah, so we've been holding sessions, web sessions, virtual sessions with the uh, partners that we have at the universities and colleges that we're in relationship with at the moment. And the list is growing exponentially because we're there as a resource to support not only the activities on the campus and the career centers, but also to direct service to those students and, and the alumni, right, who've graduated and think, I have no idea what to do. Right. So we launched um, the National Association, uh, the National Student an alumni union beautiful. So that oh, beautiful. Is a collective group together where the students and the alumni can join directly themselves or the universities and colleges can sign up their students to join within that platform that we have we've launched a partnership with game plan mm -hmm. um, that's a tech service that he they have created for us urgently as a way for the students and alumni to communicate directly together. They also are able to access us as their coaches and mentors and sounding boards. They are also able to see the trainings and webinars that we're able to share with them. Um, in addition, we're there as a service for the employees who are at these campuses and these ERGs to say you can do this in a better way. Okay. And what does that look like? And who are those experts? So we recently had a webinar with Dr. Quinetta Robertson, who talked about diversity training isn't working mm -hmm. and how the organizations can do this in a better way. So mm -hmm. these things have been, was supposed to be sort of a part of a slow and deliberate rollout, but instead it's launched right now. And, and what are the, and, I'm so sorry, go ahead. And the students and mentees that we were already working with separately, we've been able to say, here's a platform that we can directly put these students and alum in. So the students and alum that we've been working with at each of the different university sites, they're automatically being put into the system, also able to join. So what do you, um, a student goes through this process, um, they're paired with alumni, um, thank goodness for the alumni, I mean, like I'm helping at my colleges as much as I possibly can um, as the students are at a lot, they're at a loss right now. Um, so how are you getting the teachers engaged as well? Because you have the alums, you have the students, but they're both a component of the professors and those educators yeah. are helping in other ways. So how are you putting, I mean, like the, the trifecta? Yeah, so I'm going to tell you that's actually the biggest part of our work. We've seen uh, over time that the diverse populations of students and alum were not being served in the traditional fashion of career services in the same way. So they were utilizing the black faculty, the black staff on campus. They were the goal for if you needed a job or an internship, if you had questions around, you know, some career issue that came up for you. So it was strategic for us that we had to create engagement directly with black faculty and staff at the university sites. They also are privy to 
issues that are happening which might not be part of the glossy package. All right, well, right. well I want you to dive in a little bit deeper. When you're saying that the students are going to the black faculty, why? So if I'm on campus and I'm a student, and if there are job or internship opportunities, I might be directed to the career center or directed to a job fair. Usually that's like that's the uh, course. Correct. But unfortunately, a lot of the career centers and universities nationally are not all the same in quality. And so we would see a disproportionate number of those of African descent Mm -hmm. who were not being offered opportunities in the same way as students who are more the uh, majority population on campus. Okay. So it was great for us to have the partnership directly with Howard University because mm -hmm. we wanted to say to employers, just because you want black talent doesn't mean you only need to get black talent from a Howard. Right. or a more right there is more black talent at other colleges and universities and more black talent in other degree programs than just business and right. so how do we then help with the alliance to bring those two together because that's what's been missing excellent all right and so and the structure the structure of the organization mm -hmm. are not lent itself to solve that problem and what's the success of this connection, like having everyone working together for these students? What's the success, success for the student? Yeah, so I would usually get contacted by one of my partners and they would say to me, hey, I'm at Morgan Stanley and I have an internship and we're looking for diverse talent. Then we can easily then say, here are a bunch of students that we are serving who we think would be ideal. Here's students who have gone through a training program or a, a base fellows program, and they are prepared to be at this level and they can deliver um, and be placed in an internship or a job at these organizations. Here's an alum that we support and is ready. Or here's a student who needs developing along the way, and there's a scaffolding plan that we get to do just because they're not ready for maybe a Morgan Stanley or, right, then that means they should not miss out on opportunities because there's still development that we can do with them. So that's some of the pieces that we're doing specifically. But I'm gonna, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, but I'm gonna keep it, I'm gonna push back, not push back, but I'm just gonna keep asking that the next level of what's the system for the student. So the student does an internship, the student gets a job. What's the success rate of that student inside that, that establishment at Morgan Stanley? Oh, I see what you're saying. So for, um, yes, there's work that we're doing with the organizations to make sure that the ones that we're actually partnering with are not just the ones who say that they're diverse or inclusive, that there's actually an agreement between the partner organizations and employers who are not just doing glossy, you know, check mark, we've done, we're diverse. That there's part of a strategy and we're part of the strategy. Nice. So, so, yeah. So, so that's, that's one of the things where um, so many people are looking to, and this is like going to be my next question to you. Um, so many people are looking to start something that they're passionate about um, and they're doing things Check mark as in like I think this is what everyone else is doing, but not understanding the full, um, the full, um, uh, the the length of there's so much more to the story than just that what people are seeing from the outside world. So individuals that are dealing with coronavirus right now, not not having it, but people that are dealing with it uh, because they lost their jobs, they're in furlough, they are um, staying at home. They realize, like you did today. Maybe this is not the place for me and maybe this is a time to start something that i'm passionate about because it is very very clear what you're passionate about it's i mean it's clear as day to me and for anyone else that's going to hear how much you love what you do and who you serve and you've been doing it for such a long time um because you're an expert at this specific um uh, field what would you say to someone that is considering not going back after this is done and creating something new yeah and I would say to them in the same way that others did for me is surrounding yourself with your board 
or you know your tribe right so finding your tribe and reconnecting with those folks i um immediately when i decided to make the jump it was let me call so and so who can help guide me you know let me reach out to um, Jody and see what input she has before I have my first board meeting. You know, all of those things is part of awareness and humility as a leader, you know, or even a person who's making a change in a transition is you don't know it all necessarily. And so surround yourself with other people who have the talents to bring to make you more successful and ask questions. You know, be prepared, look, look up those people, look up those organizations, research them, reach out, because a lot of times you'll get yeses from people if they see it's something that you are starting and interested in. You can find a community of like-minded people to support you. I, I love the fact that you just said um, um, the humility, because you worked at Kraft and you worked at the top companies in this country, global companies, and able to know that you don't know everything is is by far it's, it's a pain point for a lot of people a lot of people don't ask for help because they're afraid they're afraid um, and they don't want to be that person where like i just don't know it i should know it but why don't i know it so i think that's fantastic i mean like that's like a fantastic thing for you to put out there for pe more and more people to understand that is more noticeable and that sh that's just another level of leadership and that it's okay is that there's there's a lot of people out there i think i had the same idea that i wasn't able or capable to uh to make the leap that i wasn't ready and so a lot of people will say well maybe in a year you know maybe in five years because because then i'll be ready <laughs> hey, I always and instead, like, well, no, no i was gonna say go, i one of the things like you you saying that is just like whenever i hear from people I'm like, oh, oh, you're married, you're going to have kids. I'm like, oh, well, when I'm ready, I'm going to have kids. I'm like, I go, so when do you think? I go, I don't know. We're going to save up a lot of money to have kids. And I always like, am very curious to know where, I'm like, I go, that time might be now. It's, I mean, I, I don't understand what you're waiting for, but it's really interesting to hear that all the time from people who are like, I go, oh, yeah. when, I'm, when I'm ready, when I'm ready. And they never know when they're ready. So I love it. You look up, you look up and it's 20 years later. <laughs> you, you, it's true. You look up and it, you're absolutely right. Um, if this is, if in a perfect world, Corona ends tomorrow, what does your tomorrow look like? Um, you know, I'm really looking forward to connecting with the students and the alum in person, mm -hmm. because I feel like, um, you know, even with the little interactions that I've had with people and not being able to shake their hand, not being able to give them a hug, not being able to make that engagement. It was such an important piece of the work that I did. You know, when I would see students, sometimes they were at their lowest. They weren't sure if they could do it. If I was uh, working in recruitment and I would see prospective students and they would think, well, I'm not, I'm not a college person, right? Or, you know, I don't know if I can do these classes. I don't know if this is for me and not for someone else. Yeah. And so I think that that level of engagement is what I miss. And I'm trying to recreate it in a new way with how I'm engaging with them, but it's so difficult. So I think that would be the first thing I would do is I get to make all these appointments with them in person. <laughs> and, and how are you, how are you taking care of yourself? And I mean, like you have the teams, you have like, you're, you're taking care of everyone. How are you taking care of you during this entire situation? Lots of therapy. <laughs> everyone, everyone. I mean, honestly, I mean, I mean, but I mean, is it helping? I mean, is it, I mean, is it beneficial for you? There is no way I could do what I do without having someone who could just listen to me, just listen mm -hmm. and not, I have to work for this. You're right. And what is this other person and how will they be offended by what I'm saying? It's such a freedom to be able to have a sounding board to talk through issues. Um, one of the biggest things that I worked on uh, with most recently with my therapist was boundaries and asking for what I want. 
So I think, this, I think this is the time that people are not asking because they're thinking I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to juggle so much. There's no way. There's no way I could do this on my own. And thankfully, I put in place last year where um, my sister is a secondary caregiver for my husband. Mm -hmm. But being able to say to her, I actually need you to do X, Y, and Z, that I do not have to do these things because I'm going to do it my way, yep. but instead I get to let go right? I get to let go and say, whatever way you do it is fine. There's things that I cannot control. And as a leader, it's important skill. I was at the um, Disney Institute Women's Leadership Summit last year, and they talked about being a female executive. And you're leading a team of people, and you can't be in every meeting. Right. It's true right? Like you have to be able to know when you are there to provide air cover for your trusted team yep. or when you need to be more engaged. And I think that's part of the way that I look at it is, okay, this is just a learning lesson for me to say, I need to let go of certain things because there's no way everything is going to be perfect. Everything is going to be right. Every, you know, the world's in flux and you have to give yourself permission yeah. for it to be just okay. That it. it's, it's, it's not, uh, it's not the time now. Maybe I wanted to finish uh, my book and, you know, here it is coronavirus and I should write this book. And instead I get to give myself permission that, it's okay. Like I can be a leader who needs mental health care. I can be a leader who is a wife. I can be a leader who supports downtime. Mm -hmm. That I can set that example for the way it's going to be after all of this is over. I love that. I love that a lot. You are awesome. You are so, so you are by far one of my, my favorite people that I've met recently that I mean, again, your smiles for days, smiles for days. <laughs> I go in, but it's like, the thing is, you're so passionate about what you do, so I love that. Um, my question is a question I ask everyone. Um, I think that a lot of people that are gonna be watching these are gonna get tired of me saying a final question, we know what it is. Um, what's the past? What is it that you want the universe to know, the people to hear, um, that you wanna get out there, um, whether it be professionally or personally? What's that? Thing, the situation that the, the new world that we are living in right now what's the ask yeah so the big thing that I say to people is in business they always say the quote of it's all about who you know but there's there isn't responsibility on the knower thank you, you if, can you that one more time yes yeah. So, you know, in business, they say it's all about who you know. Yep. That means there's responsibility for the knower. It doesn't matter that I know Jody if it doesn't really mean anything, mm -hmm. if we're not going to connect, if you're not going to think of me when there's an opportunity com that comes up, if you're not mm -hmm. in my corner, then it doesn't matter that I know you. Yeah. So what I can encourage the leaders the of organizations that I work with, the university um, administrators that I hope to be continuing to partner with is let us be that knower, right? Yeah. If you have job opportunities, if you have internship opportunities, please reach out to us and let us know as we are attempting to support those uh, black and brown folks you know, in these college campuses, those students, those alumni, these incoming freshmen. So please let us know if there's any opportunities you have. And also too, if you're willing to support uh, us with development of the students. You know, we're so thankful to you for providing the opportunity for students to learn about branding and, and giving us that amazing discount which is so great because then I can go back to my partners and sponsors and say, look, you know, here's an opportunity of something that we can offer and tangible to help these students right now. And, you know, let's go. So I think that's the biggest thing that I have is 
please I reach out it. to us for services. Please let us know if you have jobs or internships available. Uh, reach out to us. My contact information, I can be reached at Shannon, S-H-A-N-N-O-N, at Base Career, B-A-C-E, C A R E E R S dot com. Shannon yep. at basecareers dot com. And I'm going to connect everything on 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 this as well, so that way people can find you. Um, I have to say Perfect. that um, I love that you just said about the whole entire concept of is not who you know, because I always tell people if you go to an event and you're just collecting business cards, it's kind of useless. I go, I'd rather you spend that time and meet that one or two people and really form that relationship, not just networking, but form the relationship, because then that is solid. I would never, ever, ever let someone down that I know that I form a relationship with. But if I'm just networking with you and I have a business card, most likely by the end of the day, it's going to end up in the trash can. So I'd rather you keep your card and know that I'm going to engage with you. Um, I'm particular about things in my LinkedIn because of that reason. I want to make sure that the relationship is formed. So I have to say that I love what you're doing. I love that you took time to actually talk to me. Thank you so very much. When this is over, I'm going back to everyone that I, that I spoke to and to find out what your first day was really like, because I want to hear we're doing great things and continue to do great things. So Shannon, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being um, part of my conversations for the week. Thank you so much.